Greetings, everybody. How you doing today? Welcome to my channel, Rob K Reacts. You see that title? I caught my attention. I was looking at, you know, I was looking at doing a Liam Nelson funniest moment. So it was like 15 minutes. I, I can't do that right now. Um, especially with copyright issues. I'm happy with these guys it's all of a sudden. Uh, but I'm willing to try this. Six minutes, willing to try this. Just reading up a little bit on Oasis and this this video popped up. This Noel Gallagher opening up on why Oasis split. Now, this is one side of the story. Anybody got a link for Liam talking about shit like this? Let me know. I'll check that out. Uh, I'm wrapping up this session. Going into my work week. Let's check this out. I want to hear what Noel has to say about why Oasis broke up now that I'm I've invested a lot of my time with this band the last few months, man. I've done like eight live streams, like 20 hours of live streams. I spent some time. So I want to know why they fucking broke up. And uh, we'll hear from one of the brothers right now. Let's roll. I've never had enough of Oasis. I've had enough of him. Him. <laughs> and it, that, that, yeah. our, our, our old relationship was never as bad as people made out, you know, but it wasn't like, you know, we weren't like Millie Vanilli, do you know what I mean? Or whatever that means, I don't know, but. <laughs> <laughs> I, did he say Millie Vanilli? <laughs> but um, <laughs> it kind of all started to unravel, if I'm being honest, when he started his clothing label. Really? And he, um, demanded that in the Oasis tour program that he be allowed to advertise it which I was I was against because I didn't think I, I, I didn't think that oh come on it was right like mm. for him to be flogging his gear to our fans mm. and there was a massive row about that yeah and it, it kind of went back and forward for a bit as I remember it and in the end yeah, I gotta, I gotta respond to that. I won't be responding to a lot of this shit in this. This ain't no music video here. I'm gonna break this down, baby. Okay, no, come on, buddy. Now, I don't know all the situation here. Is this something he just laid on him, like, you know, a month before they went to a big, huge fucking tour? Or is this something that was well known about for a while? Did he know it was happening? And, you know, they talked about it and he just didn't like it and never actually stopped it until it was too late and caused an issue? Or, you know, there's, there's more to that story. But I can see uh, that could be a big ass problem, man. And he's absolutely right, man. We built something with Oasis as Oasis, you know. And you got to have everybody in on it to bring incorporate somebody new. Like you know, I feel bad rot using these people's videos. I'm, I'm doing the same thing, man. Using other people's videos, writing off their video to talk about it and get some views and make a little money. You know, hey, I might start some merchandise. Anybody wear any of my merch? If I get some Rob K smokes reacts. Puffing, huffing, and puffing, whatever. Oasis. Oasis. Rob K reacts. Merchandise. Think I could sell any of that? But yeah, I can see where he's going. He can be why he could be. A, okay, I'll tell you this right now. He He's the fucking business brains of the fucking whole operation right there, right there. I'll tell you that right now. Him thinking like that tells me everything I need to know about anything else I'm about to hear. That laid it all. That right there laid it all out for me. Plain and fucking. So, I ran multi-million dollar fucking strip clubs, man. I've been around everything. I was around everything. But that there told me everything. Let's see what else we got. And I said, all right, well, if you, you know, if you, if you want to advertise in the program, how much? How much? And he couldn't get his head around that. And I was like, well, if, you know, um, Electrolux kettles, you know want to advertise kettles in the tour program they pay us money right so how much are you going to pay me and he hit the roof and it, kind of, it slowly went down up from there and big time the, the night in paris it was you know he didn't turn up for the to the v festival gig i remember that because he had an hangover you know he claimed he had laryngitis but whatever you know i think and i rea reacted to something there somewhere. was a lot of bad press around that and in his own head, he thinks that I'm some kind of fucking puppet master who controls the media in England. Oh, no. So we get to Paris and he starts saying, and he's reeling off journalists' names. And some of you are in this room. 
And there's all manner of people I'd never met, you know, you fucking tell Johnny Borrow's moustache, I want to kick his fucking head in. And they're just like, what? I don't know what you're going on about. Hey, I'm Elvis Costello. And he's just like, well, he's fucking off his head. And it kind of went a bit, it was a bit like that. And he, and I, you know, and it was quite violent. At that point, it, not, there hadn't been any physical violence, but it was kind of, you know, it's a bit like, WWE wrestling, and he was like the macho man Randy Savage. Do you know what I mean? It was a lot of. I grew up with five brothers. <laughs> this is funny. You know, it's. It, I, I'm surprised. You know, it's bad enough, and it happens with people that aren't brothers growing up their whole life, competing, doing what they did, what these guys were able to do. To end a relationship due to something similar to this. But to have the two brothers, man, that been through, you know, fucking everything, man. 40, 50 years now. And to have something over something he thinks feels started over that clothing line. I can see that being a big issue. Trust me, I can see that being a big issue. They're just needing a little more info to see how I feel fully about that. Right off the hop, I think those a little... Wimp was a little wimpy on it. He could help his brother out. In the long run, it helps Oasis out. But if it was something he laid on in the last second, okay, yeah, you know, okay. I don't know. If you go either, I need more info on that. But he, yeah, he's telling it like it is, but, you know, he's. Like the WWE reference, it makes me. Let's see where we go with this. Oh, yeah, and all that gear going on, and it's like, fucking hell, you know. And uh, I'll never forget, uh, there's all this kind of to and fro going on, and, um, and I'm looking at Andy, who's sat there, constantly counting how many shoes he's got on, not saying a word, and I'm like, fucking hell, you know what I mean? And he ain't saying anything. And uh, Liam kind of does the, well, fuck you, and fuck you, and fuck you, and all, and all that again, <laughs> and he kind of storms out of the dressing room, but on the way out, and I'm glad it never ended like this, on the back, he picked up a plum. Plum. <laughs> and he threw it across the dressing room, and it smashed against the wall. Now, part of me, part of me wishes it kind of did end like that, because that would have been a fucking great headline, you know. Plum throws plum and finishes fucking away. <laughs> do you know what I mean? And, um, plum throws plum. So then he kind of leaves. He, he, he goes out the dressing room. And for whatever reason, he went to his own dressing room, and he came back with a guitar and started wielding it like an axe, and I'm not fucking kidding. And, I'm, and, I, and I make light of it because it's kind of, you know, it's kind of what I do. But it was, it was just a, it's a real unnecessary violent act. And he I like that leather his coat. Around and he kind of, you know, he nearly took my face off with it, you know. And it ended up on the floor, you know, and, and it, I put it out of its misery, you know. And then I said, you know, well, look, I mean, there was people who were in the band not saying anything, kind of looking the other way. It wasn't even a big dressing room, do you know what I mean? We were all involved in it, and nobody was saying anything. So I was like, you know what? I'm fucking out of here, you know? And at that point, the tour manager came in and just went, five minutes. <laughs> and uh, I kind of walked out, and, it was, and I, I got to apologize to Chad Smash for Madness here, because as I was walking out, he kind of came up and went, oh, all right, mate, and I might have told him to fuck off. And I was, <laughs> And if you're watching this, which you're probably not or listening to, I'm really sorry about that, but it was kind of a stressful afternoon. And um, I kind of got in the car and I sat there for five minutes and I just said, fuck it, that's it, I can't, I, I can't, I can't, I can't do it anymore, you know. That was and it. I, reg I regret it really because we only had two gigs left. If I had my time again, I'd have gone back and done the gigs. That gig would have been dreadful because he was out of his mind, you know. I'd have done that gig and I'd have done the next gig and we'd have all gone away and we could have probably discussed it, what we were gonna do. We may never have split up, we may just have taken a hiatus and we could have all gone and done our other thing, but Liam always said he would bring down Armageddon in the end, the way he kind of likes things to be, you know. And there you go. And it's a shame because I I I I was comfortable in that band. I'd you know that I'd perfected that role of that guy who just stood on the right 
and played the lead guitar and done backing vocals and sang the odd acoustic. I fucking mastered that. It took me 18 years. 18 years it took me to fucking get that right. I wow. was brilliant at it. <laughs> if anybody came to the last tour, you'll know. I mean, I was fucking great. I got to keep a fucking eye on that. But, in, you know, at the end of the day, he's obviously not... He, he doesn't like me, you know, but he doesn't like me in a violent way. I don't get on with him, you know what I mean? But he kind of takes it to a level which, for me, there's no, there's no point in being in a band with people you fight with. What's the point? You know, just go on and do bigger tours and make more fucking money, you know, and then just always be arguing about shit. You know, it's just nonsense. So I kind of did everybody a favor, you know, and I left and I spoke to Gem since and Chris Sharrock. I haven't seen the other two. And there we go. And here we are. Who's the other two? Liam and Bowden? Yeah, that was interesting. Okay, so it was Lee uh, Noel that left, caused the breakup. Well, I'm going to be interested to see you guys' reactions to that. That's going to be fun. Looking forward to that. Wow. Yeah, he, he he was the brains of the operation, I'll tell you that. And if I'm not mistaken, he wrote all the tunes. And he perfected that, so I'll keep an eye on that right-hand side next time a little more. Give that a little more act. Yeah, I, love, I love what he does, man. I love his tunes he sings, man. It's just too bad they fucking... Never got to finish it off, man. Never got to finish it off. Okay, guys and gals, hope you enjoyed that. Let me know what you think, man. Yeah, if anybody got a link to Liam talking about why they broke up, let me have it, please. I'll react to that. Check that out. But yeah, let me know what you thought, think of that. You know, funny stories, but yeah, no serious, serious issues, man. At least he's able to laugh about it at some points. Tough stuff, though, man. Brotherly love, bro. Brotherly love. Okay, guys and gals, got to roll, man. Getting late. Work tomorrow. Hope you have a great night. See you Saturday. Oasis live over on Twitch, man. Let's not forget that. We'll see you there at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Okay, guys and gals, have a great one. We'll see you soon. Peace out.